Okay, so starting on the sort of second half of practicum two, we're going to learn how to actually digitize some new data in QGIS. So we're basically right back where we just left off. Um, very briefly, I want to do two things just to, to catch you up. So uh, you may be wondering where our uh, new SRTM data is, and you might want to wonder how you would add it to your project now. Well, if you recall, we have Project Home up here because uh, this is a saved project, and so it'll just start wherever that project file is. It'll just make that the home, and anything below that in the file tree will show up in these uh, arrows over here. So, Project Home, Raster, our new elevation folder, and here it is, North 37E015, 1Arc 2nd P3. So we can just double-click it, and it will add it in to the layer tree, and into the map display and, and it may look real black but when we zoom out what you can see is there's the data right here so what we want to do is just change the styling of this a little bit so that it's not so black basically what's happening is that all this ocean has a value of, of zero it's sea level so it's zero elevation and zero is coded as pure black in this particular color scheme and so it's showing us a lot of pure black So over here we can either double click on it or we can right click and go to properties and you should get the layer properties. Now we're looking at styling for rasters. We looked at styling for vectors last time. Uh, and the first thing you should see is over here is the min value is at minus three. That's to encompass uh, all of those zeros. So all we have to do is to change it to one. And then where it says contrast enhancement, we want to do stretch and clip to the minimum and maximum. And when we hit apply, you'll see all the ocean turns the white basically it's going to be transparent technically um, and we can definitely we can see now that there's actually some uh, nice elevation there uh, but it's not like really super visible because of the black and white so if we want to set this to be in some sort of color up here where it says render type single band gray we can change it to single band pseudo color and again what we'll want to do is to change our minimum to one and our interpolation, we'll just do linear for now, and we'll pick a color ramp. So you have all of these uh, choices that you can choose. So these are standard ones, and then there's a whole bunch more that you can choose for, for uh, over here. I like Viridis, it's, a, it's one that shows a lot of nice variation. Uh, so it should automatically have brought in a bunch of colors for these are the different elevation values, and then it maps them to a single color. So when we hit apply, it should have done it that way. Of course, what happened was that uh, maybe I should do exact. I'm gonna hit apply. I forget when it comes to color exactly how you make the minimum and maximum get set. So uh, at this particular moment, let's just hit classify and apply. At this particular moment, the ocean is still purple, but we can play around with this in a future episode. Uh, to particularly find out how we make that uh, number one or the number zero over here go back to to clear in QGIS. And I will admit to you right now that I typically do all of this kind of stuff in the other piece of software that we use called Grass. So this stuff is not right in the front of my brain. It's not terribly, terribly important uh, because at this particular moment what we're going to do is to move that to the very bottom and I'm actually going to uncheck it so that it becomes transparent because it's not important to our practicum too. What we need to do at this particular point is to zoom in back to uh, you know some middle part of our valley over here and we have these three layers at the bottom we should have San Pasquale Ortho then we should have Survey Grid and then we should have 2017 structures outline. Just to refresh your memories 2017 structures are the ones that we actually recorded in the field last time we were out there uh, doing field work. So I'm going to um, restyle those to make them just a little bit slimmer. So instead of a width of 5, I'm going to do a width of 2. And uh, there we go. They slim down just a little bit so that when you're zoomed in, they're not so fat, right? So for practicum 2, what we're going to do is to make a brand new blank vector data file and then you are going to do something similar to what we did in the field, which is to try and identify features and, uh, and digitize them, uh, their geometry, over the imagery. So what I'd like to do is to pick a tile that doesn't have a ton 
of already digitized features. They can have a few, like this one would be fine, this one would be fine. And when you're looking at it, pick one that probably overlaps with the main center of the valley because as you get up into the hills, there's you know, relatively fewer, although there are some, you know, some tiles in the hills that have features. And what I mean by features uh, are uh, human-built features. So things like structures, buildings, houses, roads, dirt or, uh, or paved roads, uh, field or terrace lines. You can kind of see some over here in this particular area. Um, these are like animal pens for sure over here. And uh, another example would be like terrace walls that are curvy that you can see over here. This is, it's hard to tell, but this is actually an aqueduct for storing water. Uh, and what you ought to do is take a look at the things that have already been digitized. You can go back and forth and you say, well, what is this blob over here? You can grab the identify tool and click on it and you'll see over here that it's a well. Um, so if I move myself over to here, <laughs> you can uh, stretch this out a little bit and say, uh, original use, current use, secondary use, is there's an aqueduct attached to it or something like that. So any feature that you click on should show up like that and you'll get to see it's an animal enclosure somewhere there. What is this thing? Oh, it's an aqueduct and a wall and a terrace wall. So some things you're not going to be able to see unless you were actually walking around on the field, but some things you can see and you might want to just uh, find something that looks similar that we already recorded and that will help you figure out exactly what it is that you're looking at. So the procedure for project one is over here uh, in, your, in the Google Drive and it's this whole part one digitizing data in QGIS all the way down here to where it says part two. So what we're going to do, there's a, just a sort of schematic recipe and I'll give you the details here. Uh, we're going to make a blank vector file and we're going to give it two columns. The one column is going to be called type and the other one is going to be called condition. The type is going to be using the codes that actually we used in the field. So it will be exactly the same code that you see here, well, for a well, or anim underscore enc for an animal enclosure, or a shed for shed, right? So I have here a key for you to use the code that we're going to use, the shorthand code, and what they actually mean. So F house for farmhouse, W mill for water mill, etc., etc., etc. And what I want you to do is to, we're going to make that field type and we're going to use those codes when we digitize to encode what we think the type is. Now we may not be correct because we're only looking at imagery, but at least we'll have our sense of what they may be. The second field will be condition, and it will be a numeric code. So this will be a text uh, uh, field, and this will be an integer field. And I'll show you what I mean exactly like that in a minute. And we'll have three numbers that we'll put in. One means it looks like it's currently being used and well-maintained. Two is poorly maintained uh, but restorable. Three is totally destroyed. And uh, you know what? Let's add in a, a, a fourth code over there, uh, just right now. Insert, I'm going to do this myself, so when you see it, four will be actually um, unknown, right? Okay, so when you guys look at this full file, it will have four unknown condition as well. So those are your four codes that you'll enter for condition. Well maintained, poorly maintained, but maybe restorable, totally destroyed, likely unusable, or you can't really figure out which one of those categories it fits in based on the imagery alone. And you may find that there's a lot of those kinds of ones as well. Okay, so how do we actually do that? What are the nuts and bolts, right? So let's go back over to QGIS. And the first thing that we want to do is to create our new blank layer. And to do that, we have to go to the layer menu item, click it, and then we have uh, create layer and it opens up this sort of sub uh, thing and we basically have four kinds of layers we can make a geo package, a shape file, or a spatial light. Now these are just three different kinds of uh, standardized vector formats. Um, shape file again has been the standard, it's format developed by Esri, it's an open standard so a lot of programs can read it. Read it. So if you need strictly uh, interoperability between multiple kinds of software, Shapefile is the one that you want to pick. 
However, it's dated. It was developed in the 90s and it hasn't really changed. And so it has a lot of problems. It has a lot of sidecars files. So it's got like five or six files that you've got to keep together. Uh, the topology isn't particularly great in it. Uh, and you can't have multiple kinds of vectors. You can't have like a point and a line in the same file or a line in a polygon or a point in a polygon. You have to have individual shape files for every kind of vector, point, line, polygon that you have which is cumbersome and it means that you have a ton of files kicking around on your computer and they're easy to lose track of and generally speaking it's a pain uh, uh, to deal with. So um, what we will do in this class is use GeoPackage. And GeoPackage is a new open standard uh, pioneered by QGIS team and uh, OSGEO as a, 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 the new better uh, standard for interchange and of course what that means is that not all software currently reads it in, but QGIS certainly does, Grass certainly does, so it's, and more and more pieces of software are reading it in as time goes by. And this means that it's going to look simpler. You're only going to have one file, and you're going to be able to put points, lines, polygons, whatever you want into that single file, uh, so, uh, vector file as well. So we're going to click on that new geo package, and it'll bring up this uh, dialog new geo package layer. First thing we have to do where it says database is actually tell it the folder that we want to save it in. So we have to go to QGIS projects, SPV survey, vector, and now again standard practice is to create a new folder and in this case we're going to put 2020 new structures digitize or something like that. Something to help you and you might want to put your name under there, so I'll put IU or my initials, right? Um, just some identifying information that will help us figure that out. Uh, open that up, and then we'll do the same thing. Same name, again, that's standard practice 2020 structures digitize IU. I'm going to put new structures digitize, right? And then it will make the actual geo package file there, and I'll show you in a second. Right now, geometry type we can choose right now if we want no geometry or if we want to constrain it to a specific uh, kind of geometry. Now, what I've done in the past since I was using shape files, I just did everything as a line, and so just to simplify our lives at this particular point, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to pick line uh, at the beginning. And then right here is the CRS. We talked about that on uh, Tuesday, the, the coordinate reference system. And right now it's latitude, longitude. And we're going to leave it in latitude, longitude for the time being. Later on, we'll potentially want to reproject this into maybe UTM so we can get a little bit more accurate uh, linear uh, data measurements out of it in that way. So we're going to leave that alone. Uh, and then over here we have new field. We're going to make our two new fields. So if we go back over here, we look and see the first one is going to be called type, and the second one will be called condition. So here we are. We're going to put type, all lowercase. We're going to leave it as text data because remember we're going to enter codes. And maximum length. This is the number of characters. In our case, we don't need a lot of length, so we'll put something like uh, 20 characters should do it. And that'll just make you know keep the file uh, size a little bit smaller. If you had tons and tons and tons of entry points, then this maximum length will add up it, to the file size. If you make it be 5,000 characters, it'll be a bunch of blank spots that it will hold and it will eat up disk space. So in this case, it's, it's useful to truncate it at 20. And then we'll click Add to Fields List and we'll see it down here. The name is type, the type is text, <laughs> and the length is 20. So let's add our, our second one that was called Condition. And that one, instead of being text data, is going to be whole number. And it doesn't have to be 64-bit. It doesn't have to be decimal, date, or date time. Just whole number integer, because we only have uh, four codes that we're going to use. Uh, you won't be able to enter a maximum link there, because this sort of is implicit that it's going to be whole integers. And then add fields list. And then that's basically all you need to do. There are some advanced options, but we're not going to bother with them at this moment. We'll just click OK. And you'll see over here in the layer tree, 2020 New Structures Digitized IU is now there. Now, there's no geometry. It's a blank file. Uh, but it is there, and it is on top of your layers. So you're pretty much ready to go at this point. 
Um, just so I can show you, we'll go back to our actual you know, file browser for, for the oper operating system. We're in SDD survey, so we'll go into vector, and now we see 2020 new structures, and there's our, dig our geo package and a couple of uh, uh, sidecar files here as well. So that's why we want them to be in our uh, main you know, vector folder with its own subfolder so that everything just stays nicely organized and we don't get mixed up losing sidecars and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now, how do I digitize new features? So I'm gonna pick, just as an example, whatever, you know, whichever grid. And what I want you to do is to pick your grid and you're gonna serve it and you're gonna digitize every feature that you see that hasn't already been digitized within your grid. Uh, so this is gonna be my grid over here that I'm gonna work with. And I've got my, uh, in the layer tree, I've got my new vector layer 2020 new structures digitize IU highlighted that's important and I'm going to go up to this tool bar up here and I'm going to find the pen or the pencil and this says toggle editing and I'm going to click it and all of a sudden I have a few new tools that come available so what I've done is open this layer for editing and now I can start to add new geometry to this so by default because we've chosen this to be a line vector file only the tool uh, that is available is add line feature. So we're gonna click that, and all of a sudden we see a kind of black crosshairs, right? And what I'm gonna do is to, this is a pretty obvious new house with a nice new roof. So I'm just gonna click on one corner, and then it's hard to see probably on the screencast, but there's a little thin red dotted line uh, that extends from where I clicked to wherever my cursor is. I'm gonna find the other corner, I'm gonna click it, and now you see that red line? Then I'm going to click along the outline every time it turns like so. And there you see that green um, X means that it has snapped the current vertex to my starting vertex. Now I still technically have a little red dashed line. And to end it, what I'll do is uh, to click the right mouse button. Um, so clicking to enter geometry is the left mouse button. And to end is right mouse button. FID auto generate, we're going to leave that so it's going to have a, a unique identifying number that it's going to uh, uh, create by itself. But see, here's our new um, fields, type and condition. And so, what we want to do is to go back over here to our uh, project, you know, one description uh, uh, file. And we're going to call this a farmhouse. It's F house is the code. So that is what we're going to enter in uh, to the type. F house. Oops. I need to get my cursor in there. F house. Right there. And condition, we'll go back to our uh, condition you know, code over here. And it looks well maintained. The roof is intact. So I'm going to choose code one, a well maintained structure likely still in use. So there's my condition as uh, one. Oops. There it is. It shows up there. And then I can click OK. And then you can see it's now a little yellow outline. It's real thin at this moment while we're digitizing, but that's OK. Uh, so let's zoom around. I can use my uh, zoom tools. I can actually go back and click my panning tool. And I can use my, you know, all the tools we saw in, pra in Practicum 1. And let's find a different feature. Let's find this road, this sort of dirt road right here. So I'm going to zoom in until I can see it. And then I'm going to go back to add new line feature. And I'm just going to start at the edge of my grid cell and I'm just going to click along it, you know, as best as I can uh, as I go along like so. Click, 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 click. And then it does a little jig jog and it comes up along here and then what I will do at this point is zoom out and then zoom in over here so I can see where the road is actually going. And I'm just gonna follow along, follow along, follow along, follow along until I think, well, basically it's done there and I'll hit my right mouse key and uh, it will be done. And again, FID will be auto-generated. Type, we'll go back to our list over here and find, uh, you know, paved road, no, dirt road, D road, okay back here, we'll put our cursor in here, D road. Condition, it looks pretty well maintained, so again, I'm gonna put one, and then we'll click okay, and there we go. So, 
Let's say I did that geometry and up here at the beginning, I wasn't particularly keen on one of my points. What I can do is to go to the vertex tool and this tool is like a black plus mark. And as I go over any uh, vector that's previously been digitized, you can see it highlights it in red. And I can grab different parts of it. So I, I can grab a vertex. As I go over vertex, the little red dot gets bigger. And if I click my left mouse button, I can select it and I can move it. Select it and move it. And I can actually grab these guys too and move and add new vertices between uh, them. So if I'm here, like between these two, I can click on that and you see I'm actually not touching the mouse. It's it's it just grabs hold of it. I can put my cursor where I want and I can click again and it puts it down. So this vertex I can click it again, not touching it, and, and it still holds on. And I can put it where I want and then click again. So I can correct the geometry here, like so. So that's great. Now let's say I look at this again and I say, you know what, the condition is not as good as I thought it initially was. I want to change what I wrote. While we're still in edit mode, what we can do is to right click on our layer and go to where it says open attribute table. And now we see our uh, D road right here. Uh, we can highlight it like so and make sure that we're looking at the right one. And condition, I can just double click in there and I can type two sort of poorly maintained, right? And then now I've changed that. So that's an easy way to quickly update it. Now you'll also see that there's now a couple of different places. So if I'm table mode, I get save here. Uh, and if I have uh, closed the table mode, I also have a uh, save over here every time I change something. So let's say I move that, I get this save button, save layer edit. Oh, that's a good thing to do every once in a while, just in case the program crashes on you, it'll, it'll save that particular state at the state that you're at. Now, once you're done editing or, or you're taking a pause and you want to just sort of edit, uh, exit out of edit mode, what you want to do is to click toggle editing again. And now we basically have enshrined those things. And if you haven't saved recently, it'll ask you, do you want to save? And you should always click yes. And I want to make sure that you realize that what you're doing is saving edits with this save button. You're saving edits to the geo package file or to the shape file, to the vector file itself. You are not saving anything to the project folder or to the project file. So you'll want to save the project as well. And that will just save this as on top and whatever colors that you want to show. So in this case, let's double click on our guy over here and let's pick, uh, you know, Let's pick bright green of some kind and let's change the width to be two so that it's just a little bit wider and click OK. And then there we go. Uh, of course, we have it still highlighted, so we want to de-highlight it. So two is pretty, pretty wide. So let's go back to one and click OK. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we see our two uh, human built things that we have and they're highlighted in green. And if we want to go back to editing, again, we click on the toggle editing and we get our editing tool menus again. And I can get my add new line and I can do this pen over here. That's like so. Right click on it and uh, we can find what that is. I'm going to say it's an animal pen. So it's probably, uh, let's see, anim underscore enclosure. So we'll just enter that in as anim underscore enclosure. And the condition looks like totally destroyed, so condition is three. Right? And at this particular point, I haven't hit this save as, so I'm going to toggle editing out and say save or save without closing. Yeah, like so. One last thing to show you in edit mode. Let's say I just, I, I really screwed this thing up. I don't like this at all. Uh, what I can do is to select it like so with this just regular selection tool. And you'll see all of a sudden now I have a little trash can. Uh, I can delete it, click like that, and it can go away. I can also cut it and then I can paste it back, right? So I can paste it between layers. That's something that we're not going to do in the practicum, but you can do that. But I can delete it like so, 
and if I'm happy with that I can hit save and exit out of that and now it's not in the it's not going to be in the attribute table or anything like that so here we go uh, that's how you basically add and edit data in, in QGIS and this is a major major task that you're going to probably have to do uh, a lot if you continue uh, using GIS as a tool in research or for employment digitizing like this over imagery is a, is a major 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 task that you need to know how to do and this practicum will get you familiar with the basics uh, how to actually put the geometry in place how to encode some information into the table how to make edits uh, and how to get rid of your mistakes if you do end up making some alright that'll do it See you in class.